So here we are, about to try to explain Pu, the uncarved block. In the classic Taoist manner, we won't try too hard or explain too much, because that would only confuse things, and because it would leave the impression that it was all only an intellectual idea that could be left on the intellectual level and ignored. Then you could say, well, this idea is all very nice, but what does it amount to? So instead, we will try to show what it amounts to, in various ways. Pu, by the way, is pronounced sort of like Pu, but without so much oo, like the sound you make when blowing a bug off your arm on a hot summer day. Before we bring our resident expert in for a few illuminating remarks, let's explain something. The essence of the principle of the uncarved block is that things in their original simplicity contain their own natural power, power that is easily spoiled and lost when that simplicity is changed. For the written character Pu, the typical Chinese dictionary will give a definition of natural, simple, plain, honest. Pu is composed of two separate characters combined. The first, the radical or root meaning one, is that for tree or wood. The second, the phonetic or sound-giving one, is the character for dense growth or thicket. So from tree in a thicket or wood not cut comes the meaning of things in their natural state, what is generally represented in English versions of Taoist writing as the uncarved block. This basic Taoist principle applies not only to things in their natural beauty and function, but to people as well. Or oh, bears. Which brings us to Pooh, the very epitome of the uncarved block. As an illustration of the principle, he may appear a bit too simple at times. I think it's more to the right, said Piglet nervously. What do you think, Pooh? Pooh looked at his two paws. He knew that one of them was the right, and he knew that when you had decided which one of them was the right, then the other one was the left. But he never could remember how to begin. Well, he said slowly, but no matter how he may seem to others, especially to those fooled by appearances, Pooh the uncarved block is able to accomplish what he does because he is simple-minded. As any old Taoist walking out of the woods can tell you, simple-minded does not necessarily mean stupid. It's rather significant that the Taoist ideal is that of the still, calm, reflecting mirror mind of the uncarved block, and it's rather significant that Pooh, rather than the thinkers, Rabbit, Owl, or Eeyore, is the true hero of Winnie the Pooh and the house at Pooh Corner. The fact is, said Rabbit, we've missed our way somehow. They were having a rest in a small sand pit on the top of the forest. Pooh was getting rather tired of that sand pit and suspected it of following them about, because whichever direction they started in, they always ended up at it, and each time as it came through the mist at them, Rabbit said triumphantly, Now I know where we are. And Pooh said sadly, So do I. And Piglet said nothing. He had tried to think of something to say, but the only thing he could think of was, Help! Help! And it seemed silly to say that, when he had Pooh and Rabbit with him. Well, said Rabbit, after a long silence in which nobody thanked him for the nice walk they were having. We'd better get on, I suppose. Which way shall we try? How would it be, said Pooh slowly, if as soon as we're out of sight of this pit, we try to find it again? What's the good of that, said Rabbit. Well, said Pooh, we keep looking for home and not finding it. So I thought that if we looked for this pit, we'd be sure not to find it, which would be a good thing, because then we might find something that we weren't looking for, which might be just what we were looking for, really. I don't see much sense in that, said Rabbit. If I walked away from this pit and then walked back to it, of course I should find it. Well, I thought perhaps you wouldn't said Pooh. I just thought. Try, said Piglet suddenly. We'll wait here for you. Rabbit gave a laugh to show how silly Piglet was and walked into the mist. After he had gone a hundred yards, he turned and walked back again. And after Pooh and Piglet had waited twenty minutes for him, Pooh got up. I just thought, said Pooh. Now then, Piglet, let's go home. But Pooh, cried Piglet, all excited, do you know the way? 
No, said Pooh, but there are twelve pots of honey in my cupboard, and they've been calling to me for hours. I couldn't hear them properly before, because Rabbit would talk, but if nobody says anything except those twelve pots, I think, Piglet, I shall know where they're calling from. Come on. They walked off together, and for a long time Piglet said nothing, so as not to interrupt the pots. And then suddenly he made a squeaky noise, and an oo noise, because now he began to know where he was. But he still didn't dare to say so out loud, in case he wasn't. And just when he was getting so sure of himself that it didn't matter whether the pots went on calling or not, there was a shout in front of them, and out of the mist came Christopher Robin. After all, if it were cleverness that counted most, Rabbit would be number one, instead of that bear. But that's not the way things work.